between my eyes What do the find? Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach if you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, our sponsor is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. It's run by myself, co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. Check out rise25.com. Today, Michael Lovich also has a groundbreaking event which we're going to talk about. We have Michael Lovich who went from founding the Hypnosis Network to co-founder of Real Dose Nutrition that has had over 360,000 customers to co-founder of Baby Bathwater Institute. Our mutual friend, David Gonzalez, introduced us and said, Michael's been a friend for many years. He started a seven-figure publishing company, eight-figure nutritional supplement company. More importantly, the time and care that he and Hollis put into the Baby Bathwater event is absolutely nuts. Michael, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So let's talk about Baby Bathwater and the time and care. So, Because you were talking about the organic to automation. Sure before we started uh, hitting record. So what do you mean by that? Well, Dave said time and care. I mean, everything I've ever started has been in response to things that I don't think are done well. Yeah. And, you know, throughout, I started doing my first company in 2004. Before that, I was a special ed teacher and I didn't know shit about business. Special ed teacher? Yeah, that's my background. Oh. Yeah, I didn't start in business until I was 34 until I got married and then a year later we were pregnant. And I was like, I gotta do something. It's, it's, I can't do that anymore. So started something kind of out of the blue. Didn't don't, didn't have business friends. Business is not my background. It's nothing I even thought about at all. Yeah. So yeah. So throughout the, I'm a I'm a very very social person. So the way I was able to make that work, I needed a lot of help really quickly. And so I hired some consultants. But I go to events and pick people's brains dry. And so. Yeah, so I, I've always gotten, I, I believe in hiring consultants, I believe in going to events, I believe in joining masterminds, I've always done it. Um, and, and net net, it's been a very positive experience. At the same time, wasted a lot of money on shitty consultants. Um, every event has, like the baby bathwater, every event has some good baby to it. But most events, you have to kind of wait through the bathwater to get to the good stuff. Mm. Or for every 10 people you meet, you find one gem. But right. nine people are generally right. um, not the type of people I'd want to be around. Right. And so the response to that was when I finally had some time after kind of exiting my second company, um, Hollis and I were talking, he had a similar situation with the software company and we wanted to um, get a credit card so we could go to the same bars and not keep rotating tabs. So it was really this we could have, we were like, what are we going to do together where we could get a credit card and not have to do this ridiculousness? And, what was, and neither of us wanted to create a real company because I just created two real companies and I was tired of, I want to spend time with my family. I wanted something yeah. I could do that wasn't real wasn't you know, I didn't care about the money it just that, that wasn't why we created it right and let's do something and what could we do and we we're like man like events suck so you were brainstorming though purposefully that you wanted to start something together you just didn't know what that was exactly yeah so what yeah. were some of the other ideas besides baby bathwater that you came up with that they got <laughs> on the chopping block oh well, we that was easy stuff you know cuz easy stuff you know without creating a real company you know coaching together which we kind of tried, and people pay us a lot of money for strategy stuff, but I don't really enjoy that. Like more of the consulting route or mm-hmm. that kind of thing. But it was all going to be stu- something stupid, nothing real. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was the criteria. Yeah. No, I love yeah. to hear your path to baby bathwater. Yeah. So, what else <laughs> did you think about before? You're like, this is the one. This is it. Um, it was pretty quick. It was I was quick. just trying to fill, fill up time, and also I didn't want to sit on my ass, so I wanted to do something. And we were talking like, what do we like? And I think the thing I liked most about being an entrepreneur wasn't running the business. It was meeting all the other entrepreneurs. I, I kind of right. found my tribe. I mean, not that I didn't like other special ed teachers, but I found once I started hanging around with other kind of bootstrap entrepreneurs, I realized, wow, I think this is where I belong. I just fit that way. And I had, I made a lot of friends very quickly in this community and I realized I liked them and I just got along with them. So I went, I was like that. So what's the best thing I, you know, what, if there's the, best part about what I was doing, it wasn't running the companies, it wasn't selling the pills or the publishing, it was the people I met along the way. Yeah. 
that's what I enjoyed most about the whole thing. And yeah, what so was it's... lacking? Because I feel like from my research, you start things out of anger sometimes. Yes, right. I... And so, oh. like, there's something that makes you angry, and then exactly. you need to start something. Yes. So, what was making you angry in the event space? The first of all is the lack of vetting for people. So, yeah. I know a lot of people who I could name who run events or high end masterminds who say they vet. I know they don't. I know people in their groups. I know them. Um, you, they're not vetted. They simply are not vetted. So it's bullshit. And if they are, they're vetted by like crass things like what's your income? You know, so how much money did you make last year? What industry and who do you know? Um, so if they it's are, they're like vetted. It's not a personality that. vet. It's not like a fit vet. It's more of a kind of you meet certain criteria. And even then they don't. They just want to sell tickets. So mm -hmm. I, I just know that for a fact. And yeah, so my biggest thing though is personality. I want to enjoy myself. And that's the biggest thing we saw as a, a big ass problem was people are not vetting for personality. And it's not like one personality is better than another. It's the type of people. So, you know, people are going to meet other people who they enjoy. And so we vet for a certain, a certain personality. Now, does that mean they're the best people in the world? For other people, no. But for us, right. you know, I think people want to come and know the personalities are going to fit what they expect. Right. Yeah. That's so, like, so what it was lack? What else was lacking? So vetting. What else did you find was mainly lacking? The, mainly the people. Yeah. And two was the environment. So most people, like if I, I can't go to another fucking Marriott. You know, so <laughs> kind of generic right. hotel. Yeah. Or even resorts. Right. So when you go to resorts, you're still kind of trapped, and there's always this big room. You're sitting around tablecloths and like circles, and maybe play some icebreaker games. So the environment just sucks, and usually hotel food, especially even resorts, it sucks. Nothing special about it. That's also a big problem. The food and just the stale hotel environment, even at a resort, is still pretty cheesy, right? Because you're then dealing with their staff and all that kind of jazz. Another thing was lacking was no freedom. So we're all entrepreneurs and we want autonomy, right? right. But then we go to an event and we're expected to sit in the, like if it's a mastermind, we have to sit around for two fucking days and go around in circles and better be there. Or there's somebody on stage and you kind of feel weird hanging around the lobby. And I always end up in the lobby anyway. But then they give you dirty looks because you're in the lobby. Right. Right. Yeah. And so and usually you have like the new, and then they also have like their newbies. They're all sitting down taking notes, and everybody who's done something is in the lobby. Well, what am I paying for this event for? You know, so it's a staleness. I have no freedom, but I'm a free guy. I'm supposed to be free, but now I'm stuck in a room and I'm supposed to be places and I'm supposed to adhere to some schedule. I don't right. want to do that. Right. You know, and so the, you just and, reversed everything that you didn't like from the event, and that's what the baby bathwater institute yeah. is. So tell me about the first event. Cause I'm sure the first event was different from yeah, the event now. I mean, this was, you started this over three, like about three years ago, right? A little over two. So we're yeah. going on event number five when we throw two a year. Yeah. So talk about the first event. <laughs> well, the first one was basically, let's get all our friends together and we lost money. We did not make money. We, we were definitely negative on that event. Let's get all our friends. You know, we've been, I've been, around 11 years in this world and Hall's been around like eight and we've been hanging around together for like six and we, uh, we know who our crew is. So we just invited our crew and then I went through every consultant, whether it be media buying consultant, business growth consultant, blah, 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 and invited the ones who had made me money. Because what I had done, I realized I'd, I'd probably lost over a million dollars in back consultants, but I look at consultants like an investor would. So usually you get about value out of one. It's like investing in five companies. Four of them aren't going to make it, but the one that makes it is worth the other four. Right. So I still hire. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not once bitten, twice shy. I'll continue to hire people to help me in my businesses. Sure. But you know that one was worth it. So over over the years, I, I realized I had a great network of people who made me a lot of money, and Paul's that too. So those were kind of the people we brought in to maybe teach, right? Because I because I knew I I vetted them, and then I also brought in. I have a lot of friends who've done very 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 well. Brought them in to teach. Yeah. And I think the first event I had like six pack shortcuts teaching YouTube. I had Pedro and them teaching documentary filmmaking. I mean, everybody had really done it. And then I had some media buyer guys who had bought my media teaching media. So we were it was a good crew. Yeah. Um, it was crazy. It was a lot crazier than the other ones. Because what do you mean by like, crazy? You know, I, I ask crazy because in your one of your descriptions it says you went to the University of Arizona and you described it as social MBA, comma, drinking heavily. So I yeah. can't. So what was what is crazy like at the first one? We're a very gregarious crew, mm -hmm. and so yeah, we drink heavily. I'm also part of a cannabis accelerator here in Boulder, so where 
two of my friends, they actually invest in 10 companies every mm. quarter wow. and take a cut. So we're pretty highly involved in the cannabis thing and we help train them on marketing, branding, and I'm now on the boards of some of those companies. It's kind yeah. of really fun. So we have that crowd. So yeah, a lot of alcohol, a lot of really good weed, um, maybe some other extracurriculars, good music. Um, <laughs> So, and it was all our best friends up in a mountain, you know, we're up there in the middle of nowhere where there's no rules. We can pretty much do what we want. And yeah, so it was, our event's a real, it's always a party, but this was more on the party side and the content was a shit show. We had great people, but we didn't, I didn't have a sense of how long it would take. And we were constantly on the chalkboard. I was keep changing the schedule. Like now it's run like, but I didn't have any idea how long things would take. Um, so it was nuts. It was this, it was chaos, and we were so busy running the event that I thought it was a shit show. But then everybody loved it. Yeah. So I didn't realize till the end how great it was. I thought it sucked at the beginning, you know, because I, you know, all I, because I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a negative sorter. So I, I, I notice what's wrong. That's kind. Of, and Hollis is you more are. of a positive sorter. We're really good on partners because Hollis is one of those guys, more of a dreamer. And he, 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 Hollis adds great shit. Hollis is, you know, if you don't know him, he's a very exciting guy really fun and really creative. So Hollis is always adding cool shit and I'm always eliminating bad shit. It's so a good I'm combination. always like, this is... Yeah, so what did yeah, you eliminate it? What did you eliminate after the first one because you thought it didn't work? Um, or maybe not even the first one, but in general what you found. We always, we eliminated a lot of people that shouldn't have been there. Mm -hmm. um, so we always call the herd. Curating it, yeah. I'm getting a better idea who belongs and who doesn't. And it's not a value judgment. I think that's another thing I need to make clear. Just because you don't belong at my event doesn't mean you suck. It just means you don't belong at this event. Right. Like it's very, you know, just like our event is not for introverts, for example. It just doesn't work. Are introverts great? Yes. Do they, at our event, not a good fit. And I, I'll get on the phone with people who want to come really bad. And I'm like, Did, it's just probably not the best thing for you. You, you don't think you're going to, because you have to make your own way. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not a bad or a good thing. So we kind of learn, like, you know, what type of people are going to gel and who's going to get something. I don't want people coming to my thing if they're not going to get something out of it. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's your reputation. You want them get, to get uh, value. And the other people don't do well because it's all about the people and the way the people are the product, right? So more of that. So one was the people. Um, two was just being better organized, you know. Take, well, also we charged peanuts the first one too, so was, we were at a loss. How do you decide what to charge for the first one? Well, we didn't need the money. So the first one was just to get them there without any resistance. Yeah. You, know, it was you really just want to charge like a nominal fee just so they're somewhat invested. They're not coming for free. Yeah, and, I, and also, I didn't know if it's going to be great or not. So I didn't want to, you know, I didn't, what could I promise? You know, I mean, what am I going to say? It does. I can't promise shit. So I just wanted to have, I didn't want to spend too much time having to talk to my friends into something, taking all their money. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So spending more time on content, content was good that first time because we had amazing people, but the, I didn't really set them up. I didn't have them really um, prepared right. I didn't, I didn't make sure they were prepared. So now I take a lot of time to make sure people who are sharing at my event are prepared and I, and I go over it with them and over it with them and make sure they know what they're doing and make sure they're going to deliver. There was a show up and teach your shit, right? So some people rocked it, some people weren't prepared and their content sucked. So do you have to look it over now ahead of time or what do you, what do you have them do now? Well, I go through it back and forth until we're both happy with what they're going to share. Yeah. I have a really good idea what people want now. I didn't then. Yeah. Yeah. Back, it was very laissez fair back then. Right. So I mean, still I now people, you have a fair amount of freedom. It sounds like still, right? For the content presenters? No, not the presenters, but just in general, it seems like a free, like people have a freedom to kind of go. There's a couple, I mean, talk about the format a little bit. Yeah. The, so a big thing we wanted is that, yeah, you're free people and there should be shit to do. Yeah. You go to these shows and you're kind of stuck at a resort or stuck here. Maybe if you're lucky, the resort has a swimming pool, you go swimming or whatever. But you, the idea is that, during the two big content days, there's always two pieces of content to choose from. Right. So you might be learning like Facebook from Maddie Connor, like the best, you know, buy for Dollar Shave Club in one room. And there might be how to build a virtual team in the other room. You know, and there are really big facilities and you can go do what you want. And then, or go skiing or go for a hike or grab a bottle and go for a drink with a friend, whatever. I don't care. Or go for a nap. And you're never missing because there's always two things. So there's no center to be missing from. Right, right. So you choose, you know, so there's different tracks for people. And I tell people don't go to content unless you're into it or you're cluttering up the room. So if you're not into the thing, one of those two things, don't go. There's plenty to do. Right. So the idea is during the daytime, do what you want. 
and, and if you want to learn specific things, great. But the people who aren't speaking are just as good. There's so many people because it's a very heterogeneous. There's so much to learn. Right. And I also tell people, you know, the content's great, but what are you really going to learn in like 90 minutes? You're going to learn about something. And and a big thing we do that's different is I make the speakers pay. That um, is different, yeah. Because I don't want them feeling like a speaker. So they don't find it valuable to be there. And they have to be there the whole time. So there's no hitting. I have some big deal friends who are like, well, I'll stop by for a day and do my content. Like, no, I ain't working. Whole time or nothing, because it's a community that's being built. I want you, you know, and they should want to be there. And then, so the frame isn't that they're speaking, it's that they're going to share some shit. Right, right. They're not speakers. They're, they're people who pay anyway. Yeah. And a lot of speakers are people who've attended the time before. I'm like, and then they blew people away. I'm like, can you teach this? Right. So they're not, most of the people who speak aren't people who would speak on stage types. Right. And then, of course, I allow no pitching. And then I allow no pitching even from audience members. You know, so people who aren't sharing content, it's not a place where you're allowed to go pitch your wares or go ask for a JV or ask for, will you support my book launch? Like, none of that. Everybody is safe. That's another thing I found is you want to go let your hair down. You know, we're really about safety. And what I mean by safety is safety away from douchebags. So right. I might have a really great marketing people, you know, because it's a nice blend of 80% of people have like real, they're probably – seven and eight figure companies, it's their first or second rodeo, they're selling real things. You know, outdoor clothing, supplements, well, financial stuff, they're selling something, right? And then I do have like 10 or 15% of the people who are like amazing media buyers, amazing designers, amazing funnel guys, but they're still entrepreneurs, they run their own companies, yeah. they're not allowed to solicit. And, but that, tell them, if they give enough and help yeah. enough people, later people on- People will just come to them, yeah. You can be, solic you can be reverse solicited, but that's, that's it. Right. And then I have like 10% of the people who kind of in my life who um, will make more money than I'll ever make because I'm not that ambitious, who have like bought and sold 10 companies. And they talk a lot about, you know, are you building your company for exit? Right. So another thing that we changed was the first one was mainly marketing. And we had great, some of the best, I think, in the world at yeah. this digital marketing thing. Now it's half business growth, half marketing. Mm -hmm. What happened is like these people, like, you know, they got their, you know, I have some high eight figure companies coming. They're like, yeah, great. Um, that Facebook thing looked great. But um, who do I hire? Um you know, and, I, and these are founders. They're not going to do this stuff. Right. So it's cool they see the marketing, but then they also want to know, they're really more interested. In how do I build this team? How do I build my team out? You know, oh, shit, how do I really manage cash flow? How do I sell this thing? How do I create another company? How do I free myself? So it's half, it's as much about growing your business without marketing as is marketing. Yeah. And so then my job is to get the right people at the event. So I got that all covered. And then... I also make you know, so every year we every event we make sure it's more and more heterogeneous. And what I mean by that is, there's all these pockets of people, right? So you have like in the supplement world, they're all learning the same shit, right? And then they're all using the same software. And then if you go to the financial services, they're all using the same shit. You go to the biz op world, they're all using the same stuff, the same funnel, the same tech. There's so much great tech out there, and so many better ways to market. And so our job is to bring a diverse. So that yeah. way. Somebody in another in another industry will have your problem solved, yeah. but they're using software that actually works. And like, yeah. you know, fuck Fusionsoft. Like, if anybody's on a Fusionsoft, just go home. <laughs> you know, my event, they'll go to my event and they'll get off of Fusionsoft. Right what do you there. recommend for people? Depends. That's the thing. There's yeah. no. That's the problem with this whole digital marketing crap is that everybody thinks there's one way or one solution. No, you look at your business model, you analyze your models. People pigeonhole. What do you need? What do you need? And then you architect a solution around that. Everybody's like, "What do I use?" I'm like, "What are you doing?" Are you a, a large skew e-commerce company? Are you an uh, Ascension model where you like going to sell this and then this and then sell coaching? And, you know, that crowd is, I think, in digital marketing, a very, like you guys do, it's a very big world of I'm going to teach you how to make money world. And we limit those people. We have a couple, but that's not the brand of our people. I call them the I'll teach you how to make money crowd. Right. Yeah. It's, that's it's completely not, different. Yeah. Yeah. I got people like Garrett Gunderson. I mean, some people that I came up with that are good friends. So I might have five, you know, maybe five percent of the crowd is that, and I'll, I'll take them if they're great people and they're innovative and they're doing great work. So I don't say you can't be a person who has that model. I would just say generally more and more for regular business, you know, not the business of teaching other people business. For sure, yeah. A lot of other masterminds, it's all those same people. So great. So now the benefit of that is that yeah, you're all doing the same thing. You can share war stories. The myopic part is you're all doing the same shit. Yeah, innovation comes from outside industry. So you're bringing different industries together so they can innovate for themselves. And we don't have any restrictions. It's just that 
I don't want, I don't let too many from any one thing. I got a nice cannabis crowd. I got a great health crowd because I come from health. Great supplement crowd, great doctor crowd. Um, yeah, great financial services crowd, sunglasses. I mean, I got all, all over the fucking board, and that creates something real. And then I got some really good professionals, you know, like really good web. I mean, way higher than the. That's what I also found is like you look at the TNC crowd, or they're all the same people with the same shit. And I'm not saying they're bad, but come on, it's pretty low level. So I got high level people. I got people buying for Warby, people who are doing, bar, you know, doing. Yeah, I was whatever. looking at the page today. It's pretty remarkable. Um, I mean, just just a Love. few of these people, like Chris Guerrero. I, just a few of these people have an, an amazing background. And Chris is great. I've known Chris for nine years. Chris is one of my mentors. So that's great to get your mentors at your event because when I first invited Chris, he's laughing. He's like, you're just going to get fucked up. Nothing's going to happen. And then I <laughs> made him come. And then he's like, this is, this is great. But yeah, so I, it's good to have people like Chris who are people who like, you know, I'm not, because I'm not a businessman like that. I never will be. I mean, well, talk I'm, about Chris for a second and what's some good advice he's given you throughout the years. <laughs> Systematize, focus. Um, go, you know, like he, he teaches me how to look at things like a real businessman because I'm a more of a gut guy. Um, also, competitive intelligence, like his his competitive and in, competitive intelligence stuff, which he's going to teach a lot on this one as a bonus, is insane. Because I'm actually going to create a new company which I can't mention, and he's going to help do all that. Yeah, like a real do stuff like a real company would do. Well, do your competitive analysis, like really, you know, you can hire firms for that. Come in really eyes wide open. And also, he's helped me a lot with like the financial and the money part. Because my first company did really well, but I didn't leave with a dime because I, I, was, I didn't know what was funny, the but. hypnosis network. You're yeah, talking about? I'm doing high seven figures at a good margin, but I don't know where the money went. Um, I didn't know what to do with that. Yeah, I, where do you where did where do you think it went? Just inefficiencies and then apathy. Just kind of let it fade away. So I should have been able to exit, and I wasn't. But then I and then I found something better. But. Yeah, I just didn't know what I was doing. A lot of lost money in consultants, and I didn't know where to go from there. I got to a point, and I didn't know the next steps. Because that was a well-known um, yeah. entity. We got good actually, press. In that space. It still, it still goes, and it still makes money doing nothing, but it's, yeah, and I just didn't know, I didn't know team building back then, and I burn out as well. So how did you transition out of that? The hypnosis well, network. started another company. <laughs> I mean, did you end up selling it or just kind of? No, I had a partner and he just kind of runs it. Yeah. He wasn't the creative. And then I just created the real dose with Buck and Steve, which is, you know, and we did that one right. And that was much better. I picked that, you know, I had partners who could actually generate income and, you know, we, we complimented each other and things like that. How did better. you meet Buck and Steve? Mm, I met Buck. I don't know. Frank Kern event. I think like nine or ten years ago, he was selling some colon cleanse to crap and I didn't know this and we started doing some side projects and then Steve came on when Buck and I created Real Dose and then we wanted a doctor, met Steve and then it turned out Steve had run Franklin Mint, which is like a $200 million company. He says, well, I'm more than your doctor. Wow. I, can, I can run all your ops. So that worked out really well and he bought in. So talk a little bit um, about, I want to hear about, I mean, I want to go back to Real Dose because I like the anger, you know, that certain things anger you and then you create it. But about baby bathwater, talk about a few of the speakers that blew you away that even you were surprised about. Because it's, it's you know, not your typical people. Like if someone looks through the list, you probably may have heard of one out of ten yeah. or something. So yeah, I mean, it's just people in the trenches. Yeah, I, don't look for, I call them star fuckers. So we're not, there's other masterminds you might know of where they get these celebrities. And I was just at one and there's these, they suck because they just have their, their pitch. And yes, so what? You're on Shark Tank. I don't fucking care. But if you really, you know, like they're not, they don't have much to teach in my opinion. Right. So yeah, I get people who've done it because they're not celebrities. A couple of people like, yeah, the Dave Asprey's of the world because I'm on Dave's board and you know, I've helped Bulletproof and he's well known. But yeah, most aren't. Who are the um, few that have blown you or people away that they had never heard of before? <laughs> well, a lot of people do. Um, yeah. It's the guy I'm having you speak, Dan, no yeah, the Dan Novial guy, like he's... Mm fucking this young kid and he gets like millions of dollars of traffic for free and he was like running through I had a mystery speak because he was at my event and then somebody had to bow out so I had he's like, he didn't even prepare and I had to be a mystery speaker last time that's why I have him there and he was just sharing traffic secrets like I'm 46 I don't have ninja social media tricks what about you like I, I hate social media I can't, I can't say it anyway I find it all creepy but you know these people who grew up with this stuff these, he just gets traffic on like Doing it with Snapchat or arbitrage, and right. he was just rolling out crazy shit. I think I'm um, Dave Sinek. Spoke last time. He runs Paleo Hacks, the biggest Paleo. I mean, Paleo Hack is the biggest Paleo property in the world, and 
he came in, ran, he, he did the whole thing on content marketing last time because mm -hmm. that's how they grow all their shit. It's fucking incredible. Nobody knows what Dave is. I know Dave really well, but he blew, he blew people the fuck away. Um, and then like Esther, I guess people know who Esther Perel is because she's a best selling author and all that. But she did a thing for us on founders relationships, not on, you know, male, female and right, people right. Like crying. It was crazy. Cause people are crying was, at the, the session. That one, because it was like people are co-founders and it's a deep thing. I think you're, you're, you spend more time with your business partner than you do with your wife in a lot of ways. And it's very stressful and nobody talks about it. And she went through and it's, she's a relationship scientist, not just, right. it's not just male, female, right. it's not it doesn't matter what's romantic or not. It's the same science. And she was talking about, you know, are it's you a, a good partnership? Partner? Yeah. And then the framework of what a good partnership is. And people were like, whoa. And people, I think people were upset because they realized they were shitty partners, not because they're, I think people <laughs> they back, were upset so, at themselves. You mean. Yeah. It's more about that. It's more like, oh, wow. Like I'm not, that's not the way I'm looking at it. You know, I don't think we, and it's funny because Hollis, Hollis and I, then we, we trade with her. So we help her with her marketing and she's our relationship coach. So what is she, what's been groundbreaking for you from her advice? Well, she's just a savant with us. I mean, her biggest thing is that part, you know, the way to look at partnerships is as I do this so you can do more of that. So the idea of a partnership is, you know, you do things and if both partnerships look at it like I'm doing this so that you can do this. So the idea of a partnership is autonomy, not being together. So the idea is, what I do or what my partner does should make me more free, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So you're supposed to free your partner up. So if you start looking at so your, that's the way you're supposed to look at it. Well, it's how can her, I free my partner up? How can I give my partner autonomy to do that they enjoy? How can we work together so that my partner, because I love that, you know, because you should like your partner and, and want the best for them, right? Not like I'm mad because they didn't do this, and you always have this partner grumbling or fucking I'm stuck doing this and. Right, but if you're thinking about, I don't want my partner being stuck doing that because I want them to be free to do the shit yeah. they love. And right. I think it's the way really good things happen. And then you know that's the the macro version. There's a lot more to it. And yeah. then she's this. Hollis and I can say we're doing great, and then she can just crack us in my minutes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so what do you free Hollis up to do? Because you also have to have kind of complementary personalities right. and skills in a sense. Yeah, we there's parts where we like to do it together because it's the fun part. Yeah. Hollis gets to do the adventure stuff because, you know, like I'm the 46 year old. He I'm likes like, to go skiing, take people skiing every single day or every single day. The people. We have like the leverage people. I'm like the fat, you know, the little the guy who likes to drink a lot and I'm at the lodge a lot and I might take a, I might take people out for a little slow hike and then he's out like with the cat and he's taking people because we have like half and half. We have these actually, you know, people come. This the, where we throw it is the biggest skiable landmass in the United States. It's amazing skiing and Hollis knows that mountain, so he'll take people like on cats to places you shouldn't be skiing, and so he gets to do that. And like he was just traveling to Canada to network, and so he's able to do all these adventure trips and yeah. do that. I'm taking care of the content. Yeah, I'm taking you know I'm getting I'm more the old guy guy. You know I'm taking care of more of the web stuff and the back end stuff for the company. He gets to do the adventure, but then the actual events themselves, he probably does seventy five percent of the work. Really. You know? Yeah, cause it's his play, you know, summit where we have it is he's a member of that, like he's a founder of that group. So he knows it better than I do. So he's at the actual event, he probably works harder than I do. What do like, you do? What do you like to do at the actual event? I run the content. Yeah. And then I have a so lot of So you're making friends. sure kind of everything, the content is going smoothly, the I people. Mean, the education part works and he's making sure people are getting the time of their lives. Yeah. It's and good then, combination. And then I like, I like to do what I like to do. I like to drink with my friends. So I'm running content and then we're drinking a lot. We like to sing a lot. We have like a lot of um, acoustic music because we're, we're older. So music's a big part of our lives and a big part of it. We spend a lot of time on music. We have some yeah. really good, band, like I have a house band now and we do bluegrassy stuff and blues and people sing a lot. So it's very campy, like a big barbecue. Right. It's our barbecue, chill, not like trance, like not like Burning Man crap. Like yes. it's, you know, so I mean, these things, you know, like are a lot of work, right? So what's, what's the hardest part? For you guys about putting these on, well, the event's easy. Yeah, we got that dialed in. That's that's just fun, and we got a great crew now. I mean, that's what we've evolved to. We have a great team, and we come in and we do the same place every time. So, event's easy. Um, it's the hardest part is really just um, vetting all the people. I mean, it's I'm on the phone all the time because I turn down majority of people. So. There's certain referral sources that I, you know, that are pretty good that I like, like Gonzalez, is like, I don't, and I don't accept everybody from Dave. So I turned down a lot of his people, but yeah. he has a pretty good idea because he's been, and I've known Dave since like 98. So wow. I've known Dave 18 years. 
So he has a good he idea. He said you were the one who got him into digital marketing. I think. Yeah, time ago. Yeah, he was like, we knew each other in like our late twenties in Austin. We were all losers, <laughs> you know. And then we all separated for a while and did the married thing. And then I was I was doing Wealth Hypnosis Network, and he wanted to get involved with that world. And I introduced him to like um, Matt Gill and Wilkie and those guys, and got him a JV manager job because I knew he could sell ice Eskimos. So it wasn't hard to recommend them. He just wanted to get in the world. I'm like. Oh, this guy's looking for one, and he got the job, and he rocked it. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a problem recommending Dave, but yeah, I got him. But we were buddies before, and he just wanted a, an opportunity to get involved in this world, and I didn't have. It was easy to. He has that skill set. It wasn't hard to recommend. Yeah, him. he didn't really need anything beyond that. I mean, once you let him set, you know, wind him up, watch him go, he didn't really need my help. <laughs> what <laughs> else is a fit, Michael? I mean, extroverted. Someone has to be extroverted. What else is a fit or not a fit? For- First of all, we look for are you fucking a nice person? So that's a good people, criteria. Yeah, that's the number one criteria. Yeah, um, yeah, by far. So you can just tell when somebody's nice or they're douchey, and you can also tell when somebody's a blowhard. So it's more what they aren't. Again, like I look for because people get on the phone with me, you know, to get on, you know, they want to go or whatever, and I don't have like questions for them. I just start talking to them. I just right. have an hour, and I usually try to help them with their business or whatever. Just right, add value. Yeah. If I don't at the event, I'll still help them because it's not a, again not a value judgment. But yeah, I look for like, are they assholes? Are they show offs? Like, are they listening? If they start telling me how much they make or what they drive, that they're done. If they're talking about people in a certain way, I kind of, it's kind of, it's a feel, you know, yeah. like, so I'm looking for nice. And then I'm looking for, do they have a useful skill for the group? So that could be anything though, right? But so the whole idea is that we have a nice group and I want to know that that person can add some value to somebody. Right. It could be there, but it doesn't need to be. I can build fun. It could be. I'm a really good. I'm really good at dealing with people's personal issues. Whatever. Right. It's something that it doesn't need to be a, a, a hard business skill. It could be just like wow, right. or that person's going to make people smile all night. Like whatever it is. But right. But mostly some type of business skill, or they've done something that wow, they could add to the conversation. So yeah. I'm looking for that. Um, I'm looking for. We call you know, are you a giver, not a taker? So there's givers and there's takers. We call takers Hoovers. You know, you talk to somebody and you're like, you're, they suck you dry. And then like, wait, what? Hoovers, what right. Happened? What happened? Like, I'm, I'm tired now and, and I got nothing. So none of those. Kind of, you know, energy suckers. Yeah. So are you, a, are you, are you value added energy? Are you going to give energy to the group or are you going to take it? Right. That's the big thing. And then, and then on the business side, the biggest criteria is, because, you know, again, we have the eight figure. I got some nine. I got blah, blah. And then I got real rookies. I don't care. And I always give like 10% to rookies who I just think are super fucking sharp and I give a shot. Right. Uh, so I wanted diversity that way. Yeah. And all things. But um, where's I going with this? Oh, yeah. No matter what it is, it's not for me to judge. You've got to give a shit about what you're doing. So you've got to give a shit about the customer. So if, you're, yeah. if I talk to someone and I get the feeling that you don't really care about what you're selling or you don't care about the customer and, and there's a piece of data, I don't want you. Yeah. So. And that's the business conversation. So I'm not really, and you can tell that, you know, I don't say, do you care about your customer? You can tell by the way people talk. Yeah, for sure. So I want people who are in it for what they're doing. And like, I got, you know, we have a tequila company. We have a lot of, we have a lot of beverage companies. We got like Hum Kombucha, which is in all the mm. stores. Oh yeah. yeah. Live Aid Beverages come in. You know, they're one of the biggest beverage companies in sports. Um, but yeah, they're in, they want to make the best thing there. You know, if you're going to be a tequila company in our group, you better make the best fucking kill in the world or try to. Right. Um, if, in outdoor, we have a lot of that. If you're making the best, you know, you're making outdoor clothing, like Mountain Standard, they're our avatar. I mean, they want to make the best or I don't right. want them. Yeah. I don't want people just in a business because it's a good opportunity. Right. Yeah. I'm doing this business because I saw it in the one ads and I'm going to do a McDonald's franchise. No, that's not who we want. Right. So even like the BizOp thing, most people in BizOp don't give a shit. I was talking to your partner. It seems like you guys do. So that's fine. So because most people in your industry don't, you know that. Yeah. But then there's a good one, so they could be. So it's more about that. Are you really in it for the customer, or are you just trying to make a quick buck? Right. If you're trying to make a quick buck. I, I don't. I just don't want that vibe there. One hundred percent. Nothing against it. It's okay if you're that person. I mean, there's business people all over the world who don't give a shit and they do fine, and they're coaching little league and they're great people. It's not about that. I just don't want them. They're bad for my event. They're not yeah. Bad for yeah. I mean, yeah. What I wrote out is an equation. Um, you'll tell me if this is accurate. <laughs> anger plus caring equals a company for you. Like anger plus caring equals a company. And I like, saw this with real dose, right? Something mm. made you angry, but right. you, like you were saying, the caring component of the customer, it wasn't just, okay, you're angry and then you form a company. It's like, 
it seems like you put a lot of thought and effort into the for that particular one ingredients and also you know you have a huge like guarantee i think it's up to a year after they can return it um talk about what made you angry in that particular industry and then what you did well because the supplement industry and still is is it's a shit show because people um there's a couple of reasons why how people scam you in the supplement world is one is the wrong ingredient. So let's just take an example of like rhodiol is a good example. Um, rhodiol is a pretty good adaptogen. Um, and there's been some good research, especially on anxiety, et cetera, what it can do. However, the research was done off a Siberian strain with a certain extraction method. Right. And it's also research on a Norwegian strain. There are actually different results. But those are the only two places that has any research that's source. And it's not only the source of it, it's the extraction method. Right. Right. So then you see all these people putting rolling oil on their stuff, and most people it's just shipped from China. And as you know, like common sense. So a tomato grown in really good organic soil and everything is going to have way more lycopene and nutrients than a tomato grown in some like fucking grow lab. Right. 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 Yeah. So it's um that's the one scam is that they're not giving you the right ingredient. Right. Yeah. And and then the next thing is extraction. It's, you know, not the whole the whole herb. It's the certain actives in it. So how do you research? Do you know how much active is in it? Because that's really going to get you the results. So you see all these people and people I know in the industry and they're putting like this whatever cure and they're listing these ingredients like in big pictures and does this. And I know they don't have the right ingredient. And then the next thing they do is they don't put the dose using the research. Right? So they, they just, just put, put it in there so they can put it on the label. It's a proprietary right. blend, which is a big scam. Right. So, you know, run away if you see a proprietary blend because that means they don't have the right amount. Right. It's the wrong ingredient. So that's our tagline, you know, right ingredient, real dose. Right. So how so, do you decide what to what type of product you're going to sell? Well, for that, that for that company, because um, we had done so well with weight loss, like my the hypnosis program we had was uh, huge. And then all our affiliates. So I had a huge list and following in that with high integrity. That's, the th that's what happened. I had this huge list of people who wanted weight loss and all these supplement companies came to me wanting me to endorse them. Mm. I was a doctor in physiology and I'd ask her, I was like, what? you know, I didn't know a lot, a lot about something. So I asked my mom to review them. She goes, this, this, she was the one who told me how much crap this was. And I couldn't endorse any of them. So I really created that so I could have something I could recommend. So oh. I wanted to, went there. We wanted to create a, I wanted to create a product that I could feel good about and then market it um, appropriately and not with yeah. a bunch of magic crap. I don't believe in magic or miracles. That's a tough part probably about your competitors with their messaging with weight loss, right? Mm -hmm. There's probably people saying a lot of making a lot of claims. I would imagine. Yep, but we killed it because one is we, you know, we bought we buy media. That's you know the thing is, I do really well marketing to New York Times readers, so I market to smart people. So nobody was marketing like that, and they could see through that. And we were able to buy media when nobody else was. So all my friends are coming up to me and like, how are you buying so much? Because we spend like forty grand a day. Like, how, how are you able to buy so much on Google? I'm like. What do you mean? I have no problem with us. I can prove my claims. Why Is that why? Because you can back up your claims. Yeah, I had all my white papers. Yeah. And so when they would come to me and, and say, you know, what if the compliance would come out, I said, no, I can prove everything here. And then I didn't write outrageous copy either. Right. So we won because of that. Because now Facebook's getting really lax. I think they're making a big mistake. Facebook right now is um, very easy for some reason, but it, it, you always see ebbs and tides on the media buying. They'll get hard again. They were hard, but we never had a problem. When everybody else was like trading out cards, they're on, they're off, we were consistent. So we never had to fuck with that. So the, you grew up in an academic household, I think you said. So what what was it like growing up? Did you was it like very science background or Well no, I mean two professors. I mean a law teacher. Both of just, them were professors. Yeah. So when you were growing up, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, I wanted to be a bartender. You did? <laughs> when, you were, when you were like seven? <laughs> no, I was like a junior high. Cause I was, that's when Cheers was on. I wanted to be Sam Malone. Like, like everybody else. <laughs> um, that was it. But yeah, in college, though, as I started to get into it, I, that's when I wanted to be a special ed teacher. I wanted to do that. That's interesting. I didn't know that. For some reason, I thought you went into sales and then you went into the hypnosis network. So I didn't realize so yet. So I took a couple of years off and I did some high tech like sales through the channel kind of stuff because mm -hmm. I can sell complex stuff. Yeah. 
And I was database and key encryption management. Yeah. So selling to chief security officers is really fun. Yeah. So Michael, um, what's the vision right now? I know like in the, when you first started Baby Bathwater, you had a certain vision. What is it now, now that you've done it for almost three years? Um, we're still figuring, I don't think we're big vision guys. Yeah. Um, we're still figuring that out. We're, um, yeah, to make the events better and better, and I think we're going to expand to Europe. Um, we're, we're looking into that, so to throw better things, and also a vision to make it more of a, it's more organized, like it's been so grassroots, and it's hard, like we throw parties and it, and it does well now, but to treat it like a business has been a struggle because it didn't start like that. So the vision is to make them better and better, better and better people, and then expand the footprint, and then maybe do some publishing down the road, because we have so many, because I think that nobody yeah. really has kind of, there's other cool things too, there's other cool masterminds, but nobody has, that the, they're all a little more insular. I don't think people, anybody has the kind of diversity, and I think if we start to, we want to start taking the people who are coming and the people who are sharing and maybe create anthologies and things like that. We thought it'd be kind of cool to yeah. take the people we have and, and, and publish some of their stuff and create yeah, like... Yeah, you have some rock stars. Yeah, we thought like, you know, maybe have like letters from the tub and create volume one and create some books and some stuff like that. And then we do have like a, we have a member, we, we did the membership thing after the last event because people wanted more where we have like an online group. Oh, you do? Okay. We have smaller retreats on the back end, but you can't get into that until you've no, it's very, very well. It's kind of a one by one by one thing, mm -hmm. and this is our first year doing that, and it's been really fun. But to make that better, I mean, it's like anything else. There's a lot of bathwater in that. That's the first time I've ever done anything like it, and we wanted to be different and all that jazz, right? So it's been great, but there's been bits and starts. We so if we're going to continue to do that, um, we have to get better at it. So how many make, events per year? Do you well, offer? that's because we have our two big Utah ones, which are like the ones we're talking that's about. That's one Eden, Utah. Yeah, which are in, which are invite only, or you get referred, and then right. or, or apply, and then it's hard to get into. But then we have for our members, we have four retreats that fit like twenty five people up. It's a summer camp called Gold Lake. Maybe we're in Boulder, thirty five hundred more feet up, and it's real like retreaty, and we have a great time. But that's more of a mastermind. That's where we really get to work. Yeah, and we throw some intensives like with Est we have like a intensive with Esther coming up for the founder thing. We have a media buying intensive coming up. Yeah, those so are like, like real specific of kind of yeah. maybe around a retreat, but you find that people really want this particular topic or it hits home for right. them. And then those are like half price for members, and but they're small. They're little thirty person workshops. Yeah, I mean it's still not tiny, tiny. I mean that's you know that's, well, that's a, it's intimate. Yeah, I mean it's intimate, yeah. but it's still yeah, it's significant number of people. Who wanted to want to do it, right? And then that's more members get first chance at those. I like it. Yeah, love it. Yeah. What have we missed so far we're, from your journey? That. What's that? Yeah, we're working that one out. I mean, that's yeah. the whole thing. It's There's always true. it's always that way though. It's always yeah. a working process because, like you said, you want to cut out the things you don't like, and then you want to add things you do. So it it will always be like that. I would assume. Right. And we try. I think we added a lot. We like our membership's going to do this, this, and this, and, and we're delivering. But it's a lot of work. I don't think we uh, anticipated the amount of, and then we have to deliver because that's who we are. So we're working a lot more than we thought we would because it's a lot harder. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's the, that's the nature of it. What else do we not talk about about your your journey that would be interesting? Uh, if there's a lesson or a, a mentor that we didn't talk about that's been influential for you? I don't know. Cause I've just kind of rolled into it. Yeah. I mean. It's, I think that's, I guess the, the biggest. Who thing do you is call that, for advice now? <laughs> um, depends on the type of advice. Yeah, I still call like well, Dave Lacani, who's also goes to our event. I call him a lot for. He's more my age, a little older for. I'd say overall narrative. Like if I want to like, what's the narrative on this thing? Because mm -hmm. he's the best narrative guy I've ever met. Yeah. Um, if I'm looking for business advice, I call a guy named John Linton. He's also a member. He's. Guy's incredible. Like, yeah, I can't believe he got to our event. And then all of a sudden, like, you, he owns like a diamond mine, and he does this, and he does that. I'm like, wow. this is crazy. So, because I still don't consider myself a sophisticated business person, so he's a guy. If I like have a business thing, we we call him, you know, for to look to be an adult that way. Because I'm still <laughs> not sophisticated with the paperwork and the, and all this kind of jazz. Everyone's their different strengths, I guess. But um, I have one last question for you, Michael. I really appreciate your time. This has been hugely valuable. I love hearing about this stuff and um, your journey. People should check out babybathwaterinstitute.com. Anywhere else we should point people towards? 
We also have babybathwater.com. Baby. The Institute, that one is like this event. That's okay. One that's so babybathwater.com or babybathwaterinstitute.com. Um, so my last question is about, um, you were a hot wings champion. Yes. <laughs> that, was, that was actually the funnest thing ever. Cause I, li- I used to live in Fort Worth, Texas and they run this desk fast, a big giant hot sauce thing. It's like, it's the Mecca, right? People flying from all over the world. And they had this contest and I kept hearing about it on the radio and I'm like, I don't know. I've Are you a big a- hot wings fan or something? I like hot wings okay, but I've always been the weird guy who can eat hotter things. And I was like, you know, is this real or not? I didn't know whether I was like, you know, is it like, you know, is this real? It's just with your friends or are you really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, So I just heard on the radio and I was like, I have a good friend, Ryan, and my my daughter might have been, God, how old she would have been, like three or four. At least go to the show, you know? And then I went there and I was like, I entered the contest. It's like 20 bucks or whatever. And it was like a round, he's like hundreds of people joined this and there's like rounds. Right, so they gave you ten boneless wings, and then you had to beat your table, and then you, you had to the eat, basically eat them as like, faster than anyone else. Yes, so they're extremely and hot. they're really hot. Yeah, no bones in them though, which is nice. Yeah, and it ended up, you know, in the, you know, you, there's hundreds and hundreds of people, so you win your table, and then you move on to the next table, and you have a little break. So, yeah, I just got on there and did it, and like my first heat, I just crushed that table. Like I was like, wow, <laughs> and I'm to the next table, and I'm to the next table. So you know, I'm like. And I'm just crushing everybody on my table. Is it always ten wings, or is, do they keep yeah. increasing the number? Okay. It was that big. It was enough where you could, you know, that was, it was all part of. It. But then I sort of like I go to the bathroom for breaks, and other guys who were going to go on to the next table, I could see their faces were red and they're sweating. I'm like, and I felt good. Then I call my wife. I'm like, I think I'm gonna fucking win this thing. And like, <laughs> she came down and then made it to the last table, and I didn't just win. I won like easily. Really. They were in a struggle. They're struggling because by, by that time, how many wings have you have eaten? At least fifty. I mean, over a period of like six, seven hours. But it's yeah. I just didn't feel the pain, you know. And it was easy. And I actually had beer with my last one. It was just it was great. And they got it one this big screen TV, which is still have at our house. And it was kind of fun. Hot wings champion. Hot wings. And then I went. And, yeah. And then I went to my friends. You ever watch Man vs. Food? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, there's one where they put like the hottest pepper ever in a blender. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, because he went to this place in Brooklyn and he tried it twice and couldn't do it. So I, and my friend Have you Frank, tried it? Gino, it was like mafia. He's like, you come to New York, I'll pick you up and we'll take you to Brooklyn in a limo and we'll do this thing. And and I went there and they had raised it because some other professional eaters came and, and was able to do it. So they made it hotter. What did they make? Like, what were they having you eat? What was it? I mean, it's hot wings with fucking ghost. Oh, pepper. hot wings with the hottest. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot hotter than the competition, not even close. But I finished it, and I did it, and I got – I was like the second picture on the wall of the new hotter one. But then that one – yeah, and then I had to have some dinner with some friends in New York, and I was walking down the escalator to go meet my friends, and then I was like, oh, fuck. And I was in fetal position all night, and that was the end of my career. You mean after that? I didn't – yeah, it, might, it just ripped my stomach apart. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, so I'm done. No, never, never no again. No hot wings. Well, it wasn't – it was fun when it didn't hurt. <laughs> That's crazy. How do you, you know, you brought up the, your wife and your daughter. I don't know how many kids you have, but how do you balance family with, and that sounds like this is one of the reasons you like this business is because you wanted to be with family. How does that, the, the family fit in? How do you balance the family with all the businesses? Pretty easy. I mean, my, I, we're one and done. So we have one daughter. She's 11 now, going on 12. And yeah, I get the home office for the most part. I might have an office to go to, but I'm always allowed to stay at home. And then my wife doesn't work. And so she's around and she takes care of all the, she takes care of our life, so she takes care of not only the family stuff, she takes care of the finances, so she's in charge of our money, so I don't have to do anything but work. Yeah. And I do have time to hang out with my daughter a lot and do stuff, and then maybe bathwater is great because Piper, my daughter, comes to all my events, mm. she hangs around. What does she just, think about him? Tell, what's her, her take? She loves him. She's a, she's a ham. I think she likes she likes him. She gets to screw around. We make her work a little bit, but I try to make her work, but she acts like she works, but she's social, I'm, and I... I we have really nice friends. And so like, you know, Hollis he just got here. Like he spends a lot of time with her and a lot of like, especially the women entrepreneurs in our group, they pay a lot of attention to her and the more time with them, the better. So like, I really like the crowd mm. we have. So she's integrated into our world. Yeah. And then my wife and I go out a lot. We take her out to bars. She's closed down bars with us. So one, and I don't know how you have kids, but one is I, a part. They're younger. Yeah. They're yeah. Two and five. So they're, they're, they're a bit younger. 
it's like having two dogs. You can take one dog anywhere if it's trained. You can't take two dogs. But you have one kid. It's kind of like that well-trained dog. You can take him everywhere, and she's kind of like that dog in the pickup that gets to go everywhere with me. That makes any sense. So she's what does she? What have you feel she's picked up by being around the women entrepreneurs? I, I would. I have no you idea. I just think she's she kind of. Lot express yourself more and, and that is possible. It's interesting because you said, you know, in one of the um, audios I, I listened to, you, you said your mom used to kind of sneak like wheat germ and your spaghetti, like they were in the health and like that coin kind of probably, you soaked that up, right? Yeah, I did. I was taking supplements since I've been born. My mom's one of those freaks. To always, <laughs> yeah, doing that. <laughs> So I'm wondering, like, I'm, I'm just, it's really interesting. Your daughter is probably soaking it all up right now, you know? I mean, at 11, like, she's in that crazy stage. She's hitting puberty and all that. So it's like, you know, who knows what she's, who knows what my daughter thinks now? She's, she's, <laughs> she's funny, but I, I'm not going to, I don't know what, what she, I have no idea. <laughs> you want to attempt having, that one. We're having a good time, but, you know, right now, who knows? Like, yeah, I mean. Because entrepreneurs wife, do different things. They're, you know, we're out-of-the-box thinkers. You know, and so my my daughters aren't eleven yet, so I'm curious of what you do that's a little bit out of the box with her, um, just to, to affect her thinking or or what she's doing or nothing. Maybe she's just around your friends, and that's she's more around. I mean, I, I taught her everything early. I mean, I had her doing jujitsu early when she was like three and four, really? and I she could ride a bike earlier. And I, I take more phys- I let her take more physical risks than most dads would. Like now, it's, when she's a little kid, she was out riding a bike on busy streets with me and. Just trusted it. So I've always had her doing things a little yeah. early. Yeah. And she has been out. I mean, she's been part of Baby Bathwater crazy ass nights. And she's even pulled all nighters. We'll still not, I mean, of this, we have, we office in this little mountain home up here and we'll have a lot of people over and people will pull all nighters sometimes, but they're, you know, with aid. And she'll stay up till nine. Just, she has that kind of energy. So she gets, yeah. she gets to see the weird. And as far as what I, I push her real hard. She's, Kind of gifted at math, so I push her real hard in that. We play a lot of numbers games. I don't, I don't do too much. Yeah. You know, I don't. Do, I'm not deliberate. I don't have around this like yeah. I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. I'm not like. No, no, yeah. It's interesting. Things just gonna happen. Yeah, Michael, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. People should check out babybathwater.com. I Absolute appreciate pleasure. It. Thanks. Thank you very much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Just you find the same right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand